Let's have a look at some remarks made by Miguna Miguna concerning the death of General Francis Ogula and the remarks the son made during the burial. Listen to this. That we saw at the funeral and surrounding his burial. His children spoke a bunch of rubbish. That boy does not know what he was talking about. Joel, his son, complete rubbish. You know? You cannot say, and this one speaking even as a Luo, you cannot say there is any Luo man who says, bury me within 72 hours, bury me naked, don't eat at my funeral. What rubbish is that? Where was this boy raised? Mm. He has no authority to speak about the burial of his father, traditionally. He should have kept quiet and gone back to Nairobi. Yeah. And there is no way that as a son you can rule your father's death as accidental. Was he there? Let this thing be investigated professionally. I don't like the fact that the military are investigating it. Because what if he was killed by a fellow military man? What if his deputy killed him? What if other military people killed him? What if the thugs killed him and the military want to cover it? All these questions, there should be no question that cannot be asked. We need to ask all the questions. And they all need answers. And they all need answers. That are verifiable. Correct. So there is absolutely no issue. I cannot say to anybody, even my enemy, that they die under the circumstances that General Ogola died and that nobody should ask questions. This silly thing that, oh, asking questions will not bring him back to life. What nonsense is that? It will prevent another death if it was caused. Do you understand? Or if it was negligence, we would be able to prevent another negligent death. Why not? So. A human being is not a dog. They cannot die just like that. And generals do not just fall from the air. That's also true. So we have to ask about all these questions because a CDF is secured just like a president. Where was Das Miguna Miguna and is trying to put things into perspective concerning the death of Ogola and what his son said during the burial. Even without Miguna sentiments, it's a fact that Kenya Kwanzaa government clearly compromised Ogola's family. And that's why the son was very protective of the Kenya Kwanzaa regime as he attacked those word questions on the circumstances that led to the death of Ogola. And by the time the son was making those remarks, even proper investigations had not started. But already he had taken a decision that there was no full pay. This is not the first time such things are happening. When Dr. Robert Oko died, the family was very protective of the Moi government then. When J.M. Kariuki died, the family was very protective of the Kenyatta government. So it's coming out very clearly that this is a norm. Anytime a senior personality dies in some unexplained circumstances, their families always embraces the government to defend the government against the attacks. Though later they end up regretting. Ogola's son, as time goes by, will clearly regret what is said during the burial. And I hope things are now cooling down and he might have started realizing that he was used in a very bad way to actually sanitize those who might have been involved, if any, in the death of the father. As things cool down, he's clearly coming to his senses and most definitely he loved to regret for having made the remarks he did make. The remarks also isolated Ogula's son 
from the community around. Ogola's son is now being seen as someone who betrayed the cause, someone who betrayed a whole community. Somebody cannot just wake up and then you pretend you know a lot to a point you attack and embarrass a whole community. Before we dig deep into that, let's have a look at a news item that has been going viral for some few days now. It's a preliminary investigation findings on the air crash. The preliminary investigation suggests that the military helicopter which tragically claimed the lives of 10 service members, including Chief of Defense Forces General Francis Ogula, was not mechanically sound. Witnesses reported that the Bell UH-1HUA two helicopters propeller was not moving when the chopper went down shortly after takeoff indicating a possible malfunction. According to sources close to the investigations, the impact of the crash forced the engine located on the roof to cave in, resulting in fatal injuries to those on board. Additionally, the incident caused the fuel tank to rupture and ignite a fire, further contributing to fatalities. Autopsies confirmed multiple injuries on all victims. Yes, you can see the direction the investigations are taking. And I find it very suspicious that immediately after the crash, there was also a witness who made will come up with. Kenyans are being prepared psychologically. And this is meant to kill this notion or these allegations that there was a fall play. I see that as a plot. I see it as a pattern that was well laid out even before that crash. This might be a part of that plot. As I conclude, Miguna Miguna started off very well as a reformist. The moment Miguna Miguna joined hands with William Ruto's government, I believe Miguna Miguna lost the plot there. No reform-minded person can join hands with a William Ruto's regime because it's clear and it's true. Ruto's regime is a retrogressive regime. It's not a reformist kind of a government. It's trying to take Kenyans back to where Kenyans have come from. So for Miguna to join hands with such a regime, I believe Miguna Miguna is doing a, a serious disservice to himself. As much as what Miguna is saying might be true, Kenyans cannot take him serious per se, simply because he's in bed with the Ruto's government. I appeal to my brother Miguna Miguna to actually also factor that in. Why is he trying to ruin his own integrity by associating with a retrogressive regime? Miguna's hands currently are tied. He can't even criticize Ruto's government properly. Let me stop it there. If you are watching us but you are not yet subscribed, Subscribe, give this video a like. Any other person watching us outside Kenya, drop a comment. Let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. If possible, subscribe, give the video a like. Thank you. God bless you.